Hello, so we're here to talk about mobile networks and 5G. I'm with the Juniper Network CTO, Raj Yavatka. Um, great to see you, Raj. Uh, I guess, first of all, could you just give us your view on, uh, you know, how would you assess the progress in, in 5G so far? So I think the 5G uh, infrastructure spending and the rollouts are happening sooner than expected, in my opinion. Uh, one of the major things that 5G is changing, in my opinion, is that unlike uh, 3G, 4G networks, which were really fueled by growth of smartphones and internet streaming, the 5G is really becoming the heart of the internet because of the low latency, high bandwidth uh, capacity that it provides. And that's why we are seeing lots of interest in accelerating the 5G infrastructure rollout. I think uh, one of the things I always like to point out that the 5G is changing everything in terms of what I call, it is bringing about completion of distance between delivery of service and consumption of service. Mm -hmm. That's going to unlock unforeseen usages that we have not even expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that 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 idea that it, it compresses distance in that way. Um, another area I was kind of keen to just get your thoughts on. Do you think we're at the point where we can start thinking about five G as a, as a kind of a network platform, something that that other people can come innovate and, and and make money on? Absolutely. I think there are two areas where that's happening, in my opinion, and the private enterprise five G. That particular mm -hmm. use case is getting lots of attention because unlike Wi Fi, which doesn't provide you quality of service for use cases and applications like smart uh, manufacturing, smart retail, uh, smart distribution centers. Uh, people want to provide 5G CBRS spectrum is freely available based on that service that can be guaranteed in some ways. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's really bringing about a new change. The second is I think in the consumer space, because of the low latency, high bandwidth, and what I call the compression of distance, that you're bringing the distance between service hosting and service consumption to milliseconds, uh, tens of milliseconds, uh, new usages of cloud gaming, in-event, uh, in-person, real-time experiences, VR, AR, those kind of things are happening. So that's another thing that's really a new change with respect to 5G to make it a network platform because now you have applications and usages being brought about by third parties using an open architecture. Mm -hmm. I think the open radio access network architecture that also service providers are pushing is exactly designed for that. Make it a platform so you can provide lots of different types of services that can be monetized easily, both in the enterprise space as well as consumer space. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, 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 that's a great vision. Where would you say we're at in terms of the, you know, you actively involved in network designs or are these designs already being deployed, at, you know, as we speak? What kind of phase are we at? So network designs are changing. This is the first time we are seeing that there's a big change in network architecture for multiple reasons. One is that hyperscalers have really shown the rest of the industry how to deliver infrastructure at a large scale at a fraction of a cost because of the investment they made in operational automation, being able to deliver uh, services or software, release it continuously and integrate continuously. That has made a big difference. And they also created large scale distributed systems based on microservices. So mm -hmm. now service providers are applying all those principles of cloud native architecture, disaggregation and distributed system to the 5G network design. And that's something new that's happening actively as we speak. That's a big change, right now, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And what, so, what, what what are the implications then of, I guess, this kind of disaggregated and open network for a for an end to end service? And I guess when we think about mobile networks, typically we'd go RAN, core, transport as the, as the primary domains, but also now, of course, it's the cloud domain as well is a, is another dimension into it. Yeah, yeah. How does that all come together as an end to end kind of service that? Uh, I mean, ultimately, I guess we don't even maybe notice to carry us there if, if it's good enough. Yeah, that's right. So I think that everyone has to now take end-to-end -end view of the entire infrastructure. Like you said, packet cores are in public cloud. Some uh, workloads are in public cloud. Radio access network is far away, spanning core and transport. So at Juniper, for example, for Wi-Fi with our MIST product, we have taken a cloud to client connectivity paradigm, which is end-to-end -end mm -hmm. view of the network. Similar thing we have to apply here which means you have to start thinking of security. Because when you open up network, this disaggregated, there are different components coming from different providers. 
the security becomes an important aspect because you have to protect against spoofing, content theft, right? You have service attacks. You also have to take an end-to-end -end service view in terms of slicing because now you can't simply say, I will slice the radio access network, give slices to different usages based on different quality of service. That slice has to now expand across radio access network, core, transport, and even public cloud. And you have to provide end-to-end -end slicing. And finally, I think all of this requires investment in automation, operational automation, because when you take an end-to-end -end view, you're not going to control all the aspects yourself. There are different components coming from different parts of the network, network design. So having operational automation, automation in day zero, day one, day two operations is going to be very important. One of the things we have done with our Paragon automation suite, we are taking the life cycle view of the automation, starting mm -hmm. from network design, capacity planning to deployment, continuous releases and operations. We are trying to apply our automation everywhere. Similar end-to-end -end view of the network design has to be taken. Yeah, yeah, I, I really liked your your comment there. Cloud to cloud to client, I think you said. If I, if I, yeah, if I heard it cloud correctly, yes, yes. it's interesting, isn't it? How there is, there's some good sort of knowledge in the industry from, I think you mentioned MIS, but various other domains where there is a lot of automation and 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 control, and we can kind of bring that into telco, but also into mobile, I guess, which is what we're really talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. What MIS has shown is that because of client to cloud, uh, cloud connectivity and cloud-based management, they have been able to create self-remediation and self-healing networks. Literally 90% of the troubleshooting tickets get automatically resolved. The operator never has to look at it. Opportunity is there to apply that to the private 5G networks and also the end-to-end -end view of the network. That's a big mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, then just to close, you know, you talk about technology, but when we have these different actors in a in a service um, model, what are you seeing in terms of of business models? And obviously, there's you know everyone's got to come out on top. Yeah, you know the, the technology companies like yourselves, but the operators, the cloud providers, the application um, companies. How's all that kind of working itself out? I think it's the most interesting aspect of the 5G uh, deployment in my opinion, because there are four different things happening. One is because of private 5G, the service providers are no longer just the big pipe providers. Rather than being big pipe providers, they can actually monetize services that they can offer using private uh, enterprise 5G, smart manufacturing, smart retail, all of these applications. The second is we see increased collaboration and cooperation between hyperscalers and service providers. For Juniper, these are both our customers. We want both of them to be successful. So we want to bring about that collaboration, but still people have not figured out revenue sharing models and how the pie is going to be divided between hyperscalers. And I think the third thing is the aura, the open radio access network uh, uh, disaggregates everything. That means now the different components, applications, X apps, radio intelligence controller, uh, central unit, distrib uh, distribution unit, radio unit can come from different parts of the ecosystem. That creates a new business model because now people, different people can bring not only agility and faster movement of features, but they also get to share in their business model. They can start charging for it. Uh, that's another bit. And the last one I think that is, which is really important is that with the convergence of fixed and wireless networks, plus Wi-Fi 6 happening, and now with 5G, enterprise 5G coming in, service providers now have a new business opportunity to offer converged enterprise access and networking to private enterprises across all these things, fixed, wireless, as well as 556, as well as 5G. And that creates a new business opportunity in my opinion. Great answer, Raj. I think I can concur on, on all of those points. Uh, Raj from Juniper, thanks very much. Thank you.